Opal Beaters, it's Gina here from OrchidandOpal.com and I'm here with another tutorial for you guys. You probably have recently seen my last video, it was the 10 ways you can use gemstone chips in jewelry making and I shared some unique ways to create some jewelry using the chips. I did feature this bracelet on that video and a lot of you seem to really really like it. So I did promise you that I would be doing many more tutorials. And believe it or not, this bracelet is actually made the same way as these bracelets here. Now I haven't even shown these on my latest finished jewelry update, which I have coming soon and I'll share more about these with you there. But this is another design that I've been working with recently and I was inspired to try it with all different beads, including the gemstone chips that you see here. So it starts out with basically ladder stitch. So if you flip it over, you can see these beads here are put together in a ladder stitch formation, which we'll do in just a minute. It's pretty simple. And then you basically are sewing on beads on the top of that ladder stitch in a chevron pattern. So we're actually going to be doing this particular bracelet today. I just love this bracelet. I love how it turned out. Now the chevron stitch, I don't even know what it's called um, by others. I know this is not a, a new stitch by any means. And I've seen the chevron stitch done by various others in the past. So I wouldn't even know who to give credit for this but I've only seen it done with the seed beads. I haven't seen it done with fire polish. I haven't seen it done with the gemstone chips. So I decided to kind of take it a step further and I don't even really know what other people call it or if this has an official name. I'm gonna call it the Chevron Channel Stitch Bracelet because first of all, it makes the Chevron pattern but it also has the channel going down the center. So that's just what I'm gonna call it. So don't be upset if you've seen it called something else somewhere else, um, I do apologize. I did try to uh, find out but anyway, let's go ahead and check out the different ways you can use this stitch. So you saw this one a little bit closer up. This one is using the three millimeter fire polish in four different colors, along with 15 O seed beads in gold. And on the back, you can see I did the ladder stitch with five beads in an eight O size. So these are all seed beads. Um, they're just larger, they're the eight O. And I had to use five when going with that size. Now, when going with the smaller size, the six O's, which is what we're gonna do today, you only need to do rows of three, which is kind of cool. So instead of having to do five across, you just do three across and you can get away with using less beads that way. So that's what we're gonna do today. These other two bracelets I did use with eight O seed beads. I just happen to have more eight O's in my stash than six O's, so that's the only reason. But it works great if you do that too. And like I said, you just have to do rows of five if you want this, this width bracelet. Of course, if you want a wider bracelet, you'll just use more beads. You'll make these wider and you'd use more eight O's or six O's to make your platform wider. And then you'd use more beads on the top. So as you can see, if you only have seed beads, this is a really simple project that you can do with only seed beads. And these are 11 O's that I used at the top here. And I use one, two, three, four, five, six on each side. So that's pretty simple that a lot of people have these materials in their stash. This was only using eight O's and 11 O's. And then this one here was using three millimeter fire polish as well in, let's see, three different colors. And like I said, it has the eight O's on the back. And I didn't use any 15 O's between the three millimeters. So if you don't have any 15 O's, it's okay. Um, you will get something that looks like this. And uh, also, just another thing to note, that I used two three millimeters on each side of this bracelet, whereas on the one that we're doing today, I used three three millimeters on each side, and I used a 15 O in between. I just Really love how they all came out, but especially this one, and I absolutely love the colors of this one. It reminds me of like a mermaid, mermaid scales or something for some reason. So that's what we're gonna do today. So I wanted to show you some different variations so you could decide based on what you have in your stash, how you want to create your chevron channel bracelet and to show you that there are multiple ways to do so. 
So let me pull in the materials that you will need and we'll take a look at those. Okay, so here's the materials that you will need in order to create the chevron channel stitch bracelet, the one that I'm showing you right here that's using the three millimeter, the 15 O's, and the six O's on the back. So of course you'll need some six O seed beads and I counted them up for you guys. This is about a seven inch bracelet. So if you want one about that size, you'll need to do 34 rows of three ladder stitch, which comes out to 102 six O seed beads. You'll need approximately 192 three millimeter fire polish beads in order to accommodate the number of rows that I already mentioned here. And as you know, probably these strands, especially if you belong to the dollar bead box like I do, they have about 50 beads per strand. So you will need four strands of three millimeter fire polish beads to create the bracelet. And if you wanna go with four colors, that's up to you. I'm gonna do four colors in this nice purple gradient here. And if you wanna do two colors, you can do two colors. Just get two strands of one color and two strands of another, and it could be done the same way. So I'm gonna use that purple gradient that you see there. I'm also gonna use some of these 15-0 seed beads and they're just really tiny and add a nice little sparkle to the bracelet that I really, really like. Also gonna be using Fireline. Now this is a very thread thirsty pattern and what I mean by that is it does use a lot of thread so you may find that you are gonna to have to add thread in in between your start and end of your bracelet unless you want to work with like 10 feet of thread which actually I'm gonna try something new today that I hope I don't regret on camera I'm actually going to be using about 10 feet of fire line so I don't have to add thread. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my ladder stitch kind of in the middle of that thread. So I'm going to have a super long tail that's going to hang off the other side. And what I'll do is I'll kind of work with the one side of the string and go as far as I can with that so that I don't have 10 feet that I have to work with one hand. It'll be more like five feet, which is more comfortable. And then once I use that, I can tie it off, weave it in, put a needle on the other side of the thread and start working with that. So we'll see how that goes. And then some other basic things you'll need, of course, are your beading needle. You'll need a pair of pliers. You'll need some jump rings or split rings. I love to use wire guardians on the ends of my bracelets. So I have two of these here. I have this magnetic clasp from bbcraft.com. As you can see, it's sticking to my scissors. And um, also, I just want to mention that I will have links to all these products below the video if you need help on where to find those. I love getting products on Amazon, for example, and I can leave you lots of links for that store. I know a lot of you are able to shop on their site. And then you can just see here, I like to mention, I am using a gigantic spool. This is 300 yards. And I do a lot of beading, so if you do a lot of beading like I do, you may want to check out the fact that they do carry Fireline on Amazon in their fish and tackle section. So it is actually made for fishing. It is a fishing line. It just happens to work extremely, extremely well as beading thread. And this is all I ever use. I only use Fireline. Uh, in the crystal or the smoke color, depending on what color I want to use, but I swear by it, it doesn't break on me, it doesn't stretch. Trust me, I've used all kinds of threads and materials, and this is what I go back to. So this is the six pound, it's a nice all around good thickness and strength for what we do. And again, I will have the link for the 300 yard below. It is about $30, but for the length that you get it is cheaper to buy it in the larger quantity if you know you'll use it. But just also know that it does come in smaller sizes. It does come in 125 yards and also 50 yards if you don't wanna spend the $30 and have a big roll like I do. So let's go ahead and get our needles threaded. Like I said, I'm gonna to try to use a really long strand and start weaving from the middle. If you don't wanna do that, I would say just cut about five or six feet or whatever you're comfortable working with for now and just go from there. And if you have to add a little bit of thread, then you can add a little bit of thread later. So let's thread up our needles and meet back. All right, everyone, the only thing we're gonna worry about right now is doing our base. So we're gonna work up this ladder stitch. So if you're new to beading and you've never done ladder stitch before, you'll get to learn how to do it today. Now, if you've done ladder stitch before, this is going to be super simple and you'll probably be able to skip to the next portion. But let's get started. So we're going to do rows of three. To start 
out the first row, we're going to double the amount of beads we want on our first row. So we're going to actually pick up six beads. So let's pick up six of our size 6O, just like that. You're going to pull it down to the point in your thread you want it. Now if you are just leaving a short tail for the time being, just pull it down to however long you want the length of your tail. I'm actually going to leave quite a long tail for now because like I said, I only want so much thread to work with on the right and I'm going to go back after I've used up this thread and put a needle on my other thread and continue working. That way I don't have to add on thread. There's ways to do it, it's just to me it's not fun to add thread and it also just adds that one more little portion of vulnerability where you can add thread and it can be pretty strong but why take the chance if you don't have to. Alright, so we have six beads on our thread right now and we're going to come back around to the first bead we put on and we're going to go just through the first three. So just go through those first three beads right there and pull. Okay, so you should have something that looks like this. So your thread's coming out of this hole right here. You're going to go down through the bead right next to it on the right and you're actually going to go down through those three beads right there. Okay, so you have a little loop. Now you're going to go back up those first three beads. Just like that. This is just going to strengthen it a little bit and keep everything nice and tight the way you want it. So you went back up those three beads and you're going to go once again down those three beads on the right hand side. So this is the start of your ladder stitch. Now you're going to pick up three more 6O beads. There we go. And you see how you're coming out of this 6O down here. You're going to loop up and around and go back down the three 6O beads that you just were coming out of. Okay, and it puts those three right next to it. And once again, you're coming out of this 6O down here and you want to go back up through these three 6Os right here. Okay. Then you're going to pick up three more. You're coming out of the top right here and you're going to loop around and go through the opposite side up through those three. Just like that. You're coming out of this 6O and you're going to go down through the three that you just put on. Okay, this is literally all you do to create the base of your bracelet. And like I showed you before, you can use other sizes. If you do decide to use 8O, which are a little bit smaller, you can use 5 in each row, like I had showed you. And to do the first row, you would just double it. So you'd put on 10 at the very start rather than 6. And you'd just move along that way. So this is all you do for the entire length of your bracelet. And to get the length that I had showed you, which was about 7 inches, you'll need to do about 34 rows of three of these six O's. So just keep going until you have about 34 rows and that will be the length of your bracelet. We'll do just a couple more and then I'll pause the video and come back once we have that length established and we can go on to the next step. Coming out of this six O down here and just going up through the three that we put on. Just like that. Adding three more. Going through the opposite side. And then going down through the three we just put on. 
And once you get the hang of this, it will go pretty fast. It's very simple and it can be the basis of a lot of different designs. So it's a good technique to know. Alright guys, so so far it seems to be working out really well with my super long tail, so I'm going to just see how that goes and let you know if I like that idea or not. But uh, I have enough thread on this side that I'm going to go ahead and complete my ladder stitch for those 34 rows and we'll meet back here. Hey guys, so I'm back and it wasn't too bad, right? Right? Okay, well right now we're going to be adding on our little... Wire Guardian, if you don't have Wire Guardians, just go ahead and make yourself a loop with the seed beads and just complete the loop that way. I love to use these and I always talk about these. I cannot talk about them enough though. I get them on Amazon in a variety pack of different colors and they're not that expensive, but they really make a great way to finish off your jewelry. They look nice, but also they really protect your thread and they're extremely uh, durable or make your jewelry extremely durable because your jump rings and clasps aren't going to be pulling on the thread itself. It's going to be pulling on the metal first and foremost. So definitely check those out if you haven't already, but let's go ahead and string one on. All right, so we're going to pick up five 15 O's. Okay, and then we're going to pick up one side of our wire guardian, put the needle through there, just like that. You can see what we have. And then we're going to go down through the other side of the wire guardian, and make sure your thread pops right into that little channel on the wire guardian right in there and not off to the side. Then pick up five more 15 o seed beads. And go through the other side of your row of six o's that you have there. And that's going to complete your little loop where your clasp is going to sit on that end. Just like that. So now you're coming out of this 6-0 right here and we're going to go back and we're going to reinforce our clasp area. And we're going to do that by just going through those beads about two more times. So just go through those 15 O's, through the wire guardian again, down the other side and through those five 15 O's. If you can't get them all at once, don't worry about it. Going back through those six O's, we're going to do that one more time. It's just going to make it nice and strong. And just a reminder to make sure you're checking your thread as it goes over that wire guardian. So you're making sure that your thread isn't going off to one side or another. I've done that before and had to go back and fix it. So I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. Then go back through those two 15 O's because I couldn't get through those at first. Just like that, and then go back through the first row of six O's. And that's where we're going to start our chevron pattern. All right, guys, you ready for the fun part? This is the fun part. This is where we get to start adding some color to our bracelet, and we get to use all these beautiful fire polish beads. So as you can see down here, I have laid out my four different colors, and I have done them in a gradient from kind of like a dark to light. That's just a personal preference but it's just kind of a design element and I kind of did the same thing with this bracelet here. Of course you can do your color variation however you want. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by picking up a 15-0, a fire polish, a 15-0, a fire polish, a 15-0, and one more fire polish. Then we're going to go through the third row, the the bead, the seed bead in the middle of the third row and string on some more. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're coming out of 
this side here. So we'll just get started at that point. So we're going to pick up, like I said, a 15-0, and I'm going to start with my darker color, a fire polish, a 15-0, a fire polish, a 15-0, and a fire polish. So you should have this type of pattern on your needle, and then you're going to be going through, you're going to count down to the third row, one, two, three, you're going to go through the middle 6-0 seed bead right there. And so you've started to make one half of your little V-shape. So coming out of this seed bead, you're going to string on the same pattern, but just the opposite. So start out with one fire polish, a 15-0, a fire polish, a 15-0, fire polish and one more 15-0. So you have this on your needle right now and you're going to go through the first row here on the opposite end of that row. Making sure you skip that little 15-0 that wants to sit right there on the side but go through those 6-0 beads Go through those 6 0 beads right there and just pull everything into place just like that. And you'll see that they kind of lump up a little bit, these top beads, the fire polish, and that's okay. It's all going to look really nice when it comes together. So you're coming out of the 6 0 here, the very first row, and you're going to go down through the three 6 0s right underneath. And you can see when I do that, it's actually pulling these two rows together, which is nice because it's going to make the uh, back of this bracelet all come together and be very sturdy and strong. So we're coming out of that 16-0, 16-0, <laughs> the 6-0 right here, the second row, and we're going to string on our next color. So just like we did before, you're going to string on a 15-0. Go to your next color, string on a fire polish, a 15, a fire polish, a 15, and a fire polish. And then you're going to go through the middle 6-0, just directly below the 6-0 you went through before. Okay, so you have something that looks like this. Let's string on the other side, so let's pick up a fire polish, a 15, a fire polish, a 15, a fire polish, and one more 15. Okay, and coming out of that middle seed bead, let's turn our work, and we're going to go through those three seed beads here on the opposite side of where we started this part of our V-shape. And pull it. And you can see how it's starting to come together. Okay, so you're coming out of this 6-0 right here. Go down through the three 6-0s in that row directly below it. Making sure your thread doesn't get caught on any of those 15 O's. I've done that, so just a warning there. And you can see, like I said, how this pattern, the ladder stitch is starting to get nice and tight. And that's what you want. So you're coming out of this 6-0 right here in the third row, and you're going to string on your next color. 15-0, fire polish, 15-0, fire polish, 15-0, fire polish. Go through the middle bead on that row of six O's directly below the one you just completed and pull. And there you have that. Let's continue on. Pick up a fire polish, a 15 0. Fire polish, 15 0. Fire polish, 15 0. Flip your work to the side so you can see where you're going. Go through 
the first empty row you get to, which is the opposite side of where you just completed the first half of that V shape and pull it nice and tight. You're coming out of this six O, so you're gonna go back through these six O's, the three directly below that row, and you'll be able to start your next color, okay? Pull it nice and tight, and you can start your fourth color. I love how this is coming together. And I just realized somehow I missed a 15-0 here, so let me fix that real quick. That looks better. I don't want you guys to be afraid to make mistakes. I still make mistakes all the time. There's nothing that can't be fixed or solved, so don't worry too much about it. So we're coming out of this 6-0, and you guessed it, we want to start with our next color, which is our fourth color. So I'm going to string on the 15-0, fire polish, 15-0, fire polish, 15-0, and a fire polish. And then let's go through that central 6-0 right on the next row that we get to. Okay, fire polish, 15, fire polish, 15, fire polish, 15. Flip it over so we can see what we're doing. Go through these three six O's. Pull it nice and tight. And then go through the three six O's right below that and cinch everything up. Just like that. So it's looking really good. I love the color combination. Of course, I love the purples. And I hope yours is looking great too. So let's continue this same pattern all the way down till you get to the end. And then we'll meet back and I'll show you how to finish up this really cool bracelet. Well, hopefully everyone's doing well so far with their bracelet and you were able to get to this point where you are at the very end where you could do your very last chevron shape and I'm just gonna flip it over. So I'm coming out of this 6-0 right here from completing my last chevron shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down through these two 6 O's right here. We're gonna complete our bracelet and add our next wire guardian and things like that. Now you see down here where we've got a little 15-0 seed bead kind of going all along the bracelet down here on both sides. Well I want to just kind of pop in one more 15-0 here and one more here so that we have that symmetry going on throughout the entire bracelet and it looks nice and uniform. So if you're coming out of this section in between these two rows of 6 O's, go ahead and pop on a 15 0 and go through the last three 6 0's here and that's gonna just put one right in between just like that. So we'll just give it that little finishing touch not that most people would even notice and then pop on another 15 0 coming out of this seed bead and go back through these right here. These three seed beads or six O's. Now go through that 15 O you just put on and go through those three six O's in that row right on the end. So from here we're going to do just like we did for this end and we're going to add five of these 15 O seed beads and then our wire guardian and then five more 15 O seed beads. Then we're going to reinforce it and we're going to weave the tail back in and we're going to add our jump rings in our clasp. And I just want to mention that I had run out of thread on my bracelet about, you know, about at this point when I had started my chevron colors, and it worked so well. I was able to tie my thread off and weave it into my bracelet, and then I was able to put a needle on my super long tail thread and then just weave back to where I stopped off which was fine because then it just reinforces the ladder stitch even more. And then I just started from there and continued on with my chevron. I didn't have to go through the process of knotting on another piece of thread. And I just feel like it's 
less of an inconvenience to do that and it worked out great for me. So that's just another tip for you if you wanted to try that if you're a more experienced beater. And uh, if you need to know how to tie on more thread, there's tons of uh, YouTube tutorials on that. You can search and find those. I don't have a video on that particular technique, but I know you can find them out there. All right, so coming out of this seed bead here on the end, let's go ahead and put on five of our 15 O's and then go through one side of our wire guardian just like that and bring it down to the end of the bracelet and then go through the other end of the wire guardian then string on five more 15 O's and go through the six O's on the opposite side right there at the top. And that gets your clasp in place and then we're going to go or not your clasp but your wire guardian and we're going to go through those two more times to make sure it's nice and secure Okay, this is the last time we're going through these. And just make sure your thread goes right in the groove of that wire guardian if that's what you're using. I'm just going to go through here. Alright, so I like to flip the bracelet over and then just work back this way a little bit. So I'm just going to weave through following the thread path. I'm going to make my first half hitch knot right here. So I'm just going to go under that loop of thread, make a little loop and go through the loop with my needle. And we're going to do this about three times to make sure that our thread is secure and the bracelet's not going to fall apart. So I'm just continuing through the thread path of these six O's going up and down going under this loop right here and I'm going to make another half hitch knot so I made a little loop and I'm going to go through the loop with my needle and pull. I'm going to go through these three Keeps getting tangled up on me. There we go. And I'm going to make a little knot right here. And you can do as many as you want to uh, where you feel like it's secure. And I'm just going to end by going through these three seed beads. If you had a lot of extra thread, you could go through the whole thing again if you wanted to but not really necessary. It's just up to you. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and cut my thread right here. And as you can see, it's looking great. I absolutely love these colors and the gradient from like dark to light. I think it just looks really nice and the little 15 O's just give it another level of detail that I really really like. So we have our wire guardians right here and we're ready to attach our jump rings and clasps so let's go ahead and do that. So you can take two pairs of pliers if you want to. 
and just open the jump ring this way away from each other the ends not pulling them apart this way and then go ahead and slip that on and also you can slip on one side of your clasp and usually you'd use two pair of pliers but I'm just using my other hand to do that so just putting that back together and then we're going to do our other side just like that slip on the other side and then attach it through the other side of your clasp and close up the jump ring. So I'm thrilled with how this turned out. Like I said, I'd seen this done with seed beads, but I hadn't seen it done with fire polish beads or any other type of beads. And because we get so many fire polish beads and things like that, I definitely wanted to try it with those and I'm pleased to say it works great. So I hope this tutorial was really enjoyable for you. I hope it was easy to follow. Please feel free to leave me a comment or question below. I love to hear from you and feel free to send me any pictures of the jewelry you've made to my Facebook page or to Orchid opal jewelry at gmail.com and just a reminder that all of the materials the list and a lot of product links are listed below this video if you are interested in some of the things that I use today and I just wanted to mention that I will be back to do a very similar tutorial on this bracelet using the gemstone chips and giving you some more information on how I did this, but I think if you're an experienced beater, you can probably figure it out based on the stitching technique that I did here. I hope you have fun making this bracelet. As always, I'm thrilled to have you guys with me, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Happy beating! If you enjoyed this video, I'd love you to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell if you'd like to see more of my videos. And check out the video description section to follow along on all of my social media handles, visit my Etsy shop, and check out my new website and blog at orchidandopal.com. Thanks for watching!